Hello guys and welcome back. Here is our very first Q&A here at Bear Basics Canine Academy. I've got the questions here in front of me and I'm ready to get started, so let's go. Do you have a first aid kit and what's inside it? Yes, I do have a first aid kit and I'm actually gonna link this in either the description below or if we can link it on screen somewhere here because this is very impressive. Uh, I believe it's from, you can get it on Amazon, I believe. Uh, again, we do have one for humans as well as again, we've not had to use it just yet, touch wood, uh, but you never know. Now I'm gonna open this and just show you a few things, but we're gonna show you in detail um, everything in some nice little B-roll shots. So straight away as you open it you've got some vet wrap just here uh, and we do have so i think these are called gorge bandages i believe i think that's what they're called um again you've got a thermometer you've got nail clippers you've got an ice pack you've got a tick remover uh you've got a first aid blanket so like keeping dogs warm and stuff um pbd bandages literally there is absolutely everything in here it's so impressive uh, and that's why i would highly recommend it what's your hardest obstacle that you have overcome very good question i like that uh, i'd say for me the hardest obstacle i've had to overcome uh, is probably going full-time as a dog trainer it's one of those things where you know i was already in employment so i already had a full-time job um, and i was doing a lot of my sessions and things for free obviously uh, to start out with and i was in that little transition bracket of absolutely hammering it so like when we used to do weekend sessions for example so we'd work uh saturday and sunday and i'd smash out like six or seven clients on both saturday and sunday so you can imagine how crazy that was um and then i'd fit in like one or two throughout the week around my full-time job so i'd say probably that would have been one of the biggest points is me taking that leap into going full-time as a dog trainer it was very very scary because you know that is that kind of the point of where i'm at a point where i've got an income coming in and then it's like boom that's it you've got to find it out for yourself and that's it's scary to think about but i've never looked back since what got you into dog training so again amazing question really like that there's two i'd say major reasons why i got into dog training uh number one being my job previously to being a dog trainer was i worked in a doggy daycare Ooh, i know <laughs> i worked in the doggy daycare and i absolutely hated it <laughs> yeah so it was one of those where um i was kind of like stuck with dogs uh, i was working at least probably five or six dogs pushing further more um, as in, in my day-to-day -day job uh, and I just didn't know how to control them that is as simply as it is like I just didn't know I wasn't educated in that field in what to do with these dogs now I knew this and that like I say I know you could chuck a ball for a dog and you, you know you can play fetch and things like that and you know all that little little stuff but I wanted to know more I wanted to progress more I wanted to be able to fulfill these dogs I wanted to be able to work them to the point where they're going home not tired from running around for eight hours a day but tired from being fulfilled so I started to like I say do some research into like dog training and like I took a few courses and yeah they did help they, they definitely pointed me in the right direction as to where I wanted to venture into within dog training but it wasn't quite enough um, and then like I say that's when I found Will Atherton and I took Will Atherton's um, course never looked back since again uh, and then the other re the other reason was my own dog so Sidon my absolute nutcase of a Springer Spaniel uh, I got him again I was young I was naive I watched a few gun dog programs and thought oh do you know what i proper fancy a working springer spaniel god was i wrong <laughs> yeah so we got one uh brought him home like i say the first three or four weeks were like really nice plain saying i was like oh, this, is sick. this is easy this i can do this and then and then we hit that bracket of when you know the dogs starting to get a little bit more drivey they're starting to be able to go out for longer durations of time they're starting to now get that element of energy where they're just bouncing off the walls and i didn't realistically know how to control that 
or how to properly put that level of fulfillment into that dog to, to tire him out, for example. And admittedly, I was very uneducated in the field and he did spiral down into reactivity and you know, we know we had a load of issues of like child reactivity. So he was even verging into like somewhat of aggression, like he never got a bite or anything like that, but he definitely 100% came close to it. Um, and that's where I was like, right, I need to do something about this. I need to do something about this now. So again, same thing. So this actually happened before uh, I was struggling with a daycare. I was still working there, but it, it happened a little bit before. Um, and I started to look into um, gun dog training. So I did originally come from like the dung, gun dog esque field. Um, and I just found loads and loads of YouTube videos on like how to start your dog out in gun dog training. I read a ton of books uh, into gun dog training. And I did actually get to a nice, consistent level with Sid, just solely, just self taught everything that I've learned from these books and things. And I loved it. Like I say, that that element of being able to just train a dog and just give them some level of like tapping into that intrinsic desire for that animal was amazing. I loved it. And I think it's probably from that point on where I just thought, yeah, I absolutely want to be doing this for the rest of my life. This is a really good question. I like this. Would you ever do a puppy Kickstarter course? Now, I've actually thought about this and the answer short answer is yes, I would absolutely love to do one. The long answer, however, is I'm going to have to be able to find some time in order to be able to like film videos, write up loads of like theory based stuff in order for people to look into. And again, of course, also have a puppy that I can also document throughout my journey. Now, this does lead me on to my next point of eventually, I definitely do want to look into getting some working breeds. Now, I haven't 100% got my mind set on a breed that I want to have, but when I do do that, I absolutely will be pushing more puppy content and I will be pushing for documenting key parts without throughout that, uh, that dog's journey uh, into progressing into adolescence. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> it's not going to be happening yet, don't get me wrong, but it will be happening eventually. So yes, thank you for that. Very good question. If you weren't a dog trainer, what would you be doing? Um, to be fair, I reckon I probably would be doing something along the lines of either being like a PT, for example, so a personal trainer, or I've always had a um, I've always had this desire to be a farmer. So agriculture is something that's always been a big part throughout all of my life. I've always grown up around like uh, farms and things like that. Like my nan's house uh, is literally like a five, 10 minute walk away from the local farm. And I used to just walk around there all the time. Uh, when I was actually at college, I studied animal care, and animal management. Um, and I do have qualifications in um, a super random one, for example, is I've got a qualification in being able to load a trailer with livestock. I know, super random. So if ever I need that one day, there it is. Um, and yeah, it's something that I've always had a passion for. And to be fair, eventually I do believe I will have somewhat of like a small holding or something like that. Like again, Yasmin, for example, my partner, she's massive into horses. So we will be looking into that and eventually progressing into getting like our own horses and stuff. Again, bigger picture, I know. Um, but 100% that is something that I have always loved. So probably either being a PT or some farmer. <laughs> Tips on moving the crate to another room. Super interesting question. It's something that not a lot of people probably would think about, but again, something that I always relay back to is dogs do learn through association and they do learn that there are key patterns throughout whenever they're doing something, for example. So like a crate, for example, if a crate is in one room and you then suddenly just remove that crate from that room and put it into a different room, that is absolutely going to stress that dog out. It's going to confuse them and be like, well, what, what, what do you mean? Where's my crate gone? Like, what, why is it in this room now, you know? So this is where it's very important to not only sort of like recondition the crate for that dog, so getting them to understand that now it's not here, it's 
in the other room, for example. So, and it's not like a major big deal and dogs aren't gonna get super stressed out about it, but it's just gonna take a few little like crate training games or just like recreating that association to let that dog know that the crate is in a different room. Um, so again, plenty of food, plenty of treats, plenty of, well, hand feeding, should we say, uh, plenty of that and just kind of just getting that dog to recondition their understanding of where the crate is and utilizing it like that. Best long line for training that doesn't give rope burn? Oh, I love this question for reason being is when I was first starting out in dog training, I had the crappiest long lines probably known to man. You know, like the, the super like seat belty material ones. Oh my God, they were horrible. And for some reason, they're about 20 billion million miles in length. Like why do you need that much long line? Literally now through experience, I've learned that you literally need no more than probably 10 meters, if that, maybe even five. Um, and I always recommend biothane long lines. I swear by them. Reason being is they're very easy, super easy to clean. They're not as harsh on the hands. Like again, when they get a little bit wet, which again, I'll go into in a moment of another one that I'd recommend. When they get a little bit wet, they can become a little bit slippy, but you're not running that risk of rope burn or anything like that from all the other little crappy ones that you can get. Um, but my other recommendation, and this is going to be crazy coming from a dog trainer, but a flexi lead. And I mean a good, quality strong flexi lead not the little crappy ones that you can get that are just going to snap after like two or three goes but like the proper flexi breed uh breed flexi uh brands which again i will put a little picture of what i mean on screen um they're the ones that I would recommend. They're good, they're strong, they're good quality. It eliminates that factor of if it's wet and horrible, you're not then having to trail through a dirty long line, getting your dog reel back in. You've literally just got the handle of the of the flexi to utilize, which is perfect. You don't need anything more than that. And plus it's strong, it's durable, it's gonna last. How long have you been a dog trainer? Super good question there. Actually, I haven't been a dog trainer for very long professionally. Uh, don't get me wrong, I've been training dogs, I'd say from probably when I was about, oh, about 10 years old. Uh, I've always had dogs throughout all of my life. Don't get me wrong, I, that question I hear a lot, or that statement I hear a lot, I've had dogs all my life kind of thing, but I did do, like you say, learning to sit or teaching a dog just little commands. I've always been doing that throughout all of my life, but professionally, I've actually only been a dog trainer for, just under a year now uh, from whenever this video has been posted so professionally that's how long i've been a dog trainer uh like i say it's one of those one of those jobs where you're always learning you're always evolving you're always adapting your training style to suit dogs no dog is the same you're always working a different case every single day um and i just love it it's just always been a burning passion of mine to work dogs and help them live better lives and obviously help their owners live better lives with their dog so only a year um, I've been studying dog training a long much 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 longer than that don't get me wrong but yeah it's only just a year next dog breeds or breed or breeds you want and why so this has had a lot of thought um, because I'm a little bit stumped at this moment in time as again like the previous question about progressing through dog training and, and what I find um, like what breeds stand out to me so super super random one and it's probably going to take a lot of people by surprise but I would absolutely love a little Texel uh, Texel little Tekel uh, Dachshund so a little wire red Dachshund I would absolutely love one or, or two um, reason being is I'm very into like my country sports and my country living and things like that. So I would absolutely love one for working and that is absolutely what I will do with it. It will be getting complete and utter fulfillment throughout all of its life. Um, and we're gonna be taking it absolutely everywhere. But near future, that's probably gonna be one of the, the breeds that I get. It's not gonna be the one that I'm gonna be getting straight away, 
but the one that I feel I will be getting straight away is, like I said previously, somewhat of a working breed. Again, this has changed so many times throughout me progressing and understanding the world of dog sports. Uh, I was originally set on a working German Shepherd. I've now progressed further in understanding sports and realised that they're not what they're made out to be. I mean, there are some absolute outstanding breeds, uh, breeders out there, but for what I'm looking into getting into, I just don't think it's the right breed for me. Um, so possibly looking at either somewhat of a Dutch Shepherd or a Belgian Malinois. Uh, super drivey dogs, super drivey dogs, but that's where I'm at in terms of my dog training career is I want to progress into that end of the spectrum. Again, I'm always gonna be training pet dogs. That is what I'm set out to do. That's what I want to do as a, for a living. Um, but yeah, having that sport element in there, I 100% wanna dive in on that. Uh, so yeah, either a Dutchie or a Belgian Malinois. <laughs> and just like the previous uh, question, opinions on Milanois, uh, Malinois in the average home. Super great question. Um, I'm going to put this as bluntly as I can. Malinois are not pets. They are not pets in the slightest. You cannot have one of those dogs and not properly fulfill it. You cannot just take a Malinois on like a hour walk or something like you could do with a, a Labrador or a Labrador Retriever or anything like that because their drive is just astronomical like it's through the roof you've got to be able to properly stimulate that dog you've got to be able to give that dog proper fulfillment and work them properly you know giving them that that job to do, tapping into that drive, whatever that drive would be, you know, you've got to be able to work these dogs. So I would absolutely would not recommend them in just the average home. The average sport home, however, absolutely go for it. If you can commit to that dog and you can commit to that breed and you can give it 110%, not 100%, 110%, absolutely go for it. But yeah, for the average home, I would not recommend the Belgian Malinois, definitely not. So guys, thank you for sitting around and listening to me waffle for the duration of time of this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed. Please, please, please head over to our Instagram, which again will be linked in the description below for you to ask further questions for our next Q&A that we'll be doing very, very soon. I really enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed the concept of it. So I absolutely will be doing a lot more of them, but thank you you for watching hope you enjoyed and i shall see you again next time